Hello, 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 this is Attorney Mike Gravel. I'm coming to you from Chicago. As usual, I got a whole bunch of stuff. I got a lot of people to thank. Who who contributed? Alyssa, Claire, Lookificence Lair. I see her in the comments. Um, a, a good anonymous source. If I'm forgetting anybody, I'll try to pick it up as I go because I have so much stuff. I have so much stuff because here's what's going on. There was so much material yesterday that I had two good streams already. I had Judge Cranky Pants in the morning. <laughs> then we went on the love boat. It was good times. But but there's only so many hours in the day, and there were, there were tons of other goofy things going on. So we're going to clean it up here on Saturday. I got, some, I got some new stuff, too. I got some fresh stuff. Let's get this thing started, shall we? What is the C, uh, the number, the 24? Oh, the Cobb County? Mm-hmm. I think she wants the case number. Is that correct, Michelle? No, the CP number? 23 yeah, CP. Hey, Jayanette McGee, put some clothes on now. Put clothes on. Stop smiling and go put on a shirt. I'm sorry. You get dressed, you can come back. All right, here's somebody coming in, Cobb. So your whole name? Beneficiary. Oh, he done this before. What's his name? The beneficiary. Yeah. Your first name, Mr. Beneficiary. Are you stating that the Are you stating that the trust that we are administrating is to Kevin? All right. First of all, if you if your whole shtick is is to be a jag off and to come use a different word, all I'm saying is learn how to pronounce that word. <laughs> it still doesn't help you legally, but you know, you you just don't want to be a laughing stock on on all fronts. From the get, I'm probably trust. If so, I'm asking. I'm asking what your name is. My name is the beneficiary of the trust. Of whose trust? Are you stating that the trust that we are now administrating is the Kevin Pollard trust, Your Honor? Okay, if I'm gonna so recall him. Bring up somebody else. Put him aside. Thank you, Come at the end. Thank you Judge. <laughs> Sir, is your yes, name sir. beneficiary Kevin Teron Anthony Pollard? Yes or no? I'm the beneficiary of the trust, Your Honor. Are you stating that the trust that we are now administrating is the Kevin Pollard Trust? Is are that you what Kevin you're I'm asking is, you. Is the is the trust that we are now administering? I ask the questions here. You give me yes or no I, answers. I'm, I'm a, you're asking for my permission I to ask the speak. questions. You give the answers. Is that clear? It's very clear. Okay. Listen. Yes. Are you also Are you, known by the name of Kevin Pollard amongst other names? Yes or no? Are you stating that the trust that we are now administrating is the Kevin Pollard Trust, Your Honor? If so, Kevin Pollard is, in fact, present today. It is you that is Kevin Pollard, Your Honor. It is you. Really? Yes, Your Honor. Really? It is you that, really? is, you that is Kevin Pollard. Yes, Your I'm Honor. You are, you are Kevin Pollard today, Your Honor. I am the beneficiary. And then who are you? I am the beneficiary of the trust. Okay, well, Mr. Beneficiary, take you and your trust back to jail. I have some questions for the clerk, Your Honor. No. I, I have, I have, can I speak to the clerk before we go any further? You know what, I'm put you in time out. Get your mind right. <laughs> All right, beneficiary. <laughs> I'm gonna give you another chance in front of another magistrate. <laughs> That's no problem. Can I have the clerk present, please? Hey, sir. Sir, I'm magistrate in charge of that. DDC. Excuse me. Yeah. I'm, at, I'm talking to the DDC officer. 
Yes. CDC? Yes, ma'am. Okay. The gentleman that is in front of the screen, in front of camera one, what name do you have him listed as? Kevin Pollard. Do you have a middle name? No, ma'am. Okay, so you have a Kevin Pollard. Okay, and sir, you are identified as Kevin Pollard, but you're uh, considering yourself the uh, beneficiary. Is that correct, sir? Are we on the record? We are. Everything is on the record. Okay, are you stating that the, um, that the trust that we are now administrating is the Kevin Pollard Trust, ma'am? I'm not administrating any trust because there is no trust in front of me. But what I'm asking you is you call yourself the beneficiary. Is that correct? <laughs> Yes, Your Honor. Okay, no problem. I have case number is 240 uh, Google State of Michigan versus Kevin Theron, Anthony Pollard. I cleaned this up a little because the charges are nasty. You get the idea. He's a creep. Or at least an alleged creep. Your Honor. Listed by you're, 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 DBC you're, as Kevin you're, you're, Pollard. You're, However, the you're, gentleman has identified you're, himself you're, as you a are, you, you representing as Kevin Pollard today, Your Honor. Mr. Pollard, I'm not. Mr. Pollard, now, as your counsel, I am going to advise that you stop speaking and allow the judge to speak. Yes, ma'am. Uh, counsel Kirkland. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Shava Kirkland on behalf of Mr. Pollard, who has been advised of his rights, which is to stand mute and waive the formal reading. Thank you. I'm going to enter a plea of not guilty. Court dates are uh, February 2nd, 2024. I, 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 it is a probable cause conference, followed by preliminary examination, February 8th, 1.30 p.m. Uh, both matters are in front of Judge King. Probable cause conference, it is at 8.30 in the morning. Uh, Mr. Your Beneficiary, Mr. Beneficiary, you should not come over to the court. You I are thank under you very oath. much. You are under oath and you are on record. Yeah. And I'm asking you, uh, is, 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 I have not sworn you under oath. I am under oath, so I am doing all this. Under, I'm going to enter a plea of not guilty. I already given under, the court dates. While well, this case is pending, sir. Okay, there should under, be no contact you are not allowed with the to, individual. You are, not allowed, you are not allowed to state what the judgment is. That is my Mr. job. Collard, Mr. Collard, Collard, I do want to let you know that the judgment. Okay. I have all a right, question for the clerk. Okay. I have a BBC question for the clerk. For a moment. I have a question for the clerk. You will give an opportunity, sir. You have. You will give an opportunity. Let me finish. While this case is pending, there's no contact with a Nyla Harvey. That means no person. Person contact. No contact to third parties. No phone calls. No emails. No text messaging. Uh, uh, the people, go ahead, Esteban. Yeah, the people are asking for $250,000 cash bond, no cash, no surety. If he's able to ever post bond, we'd like GPS tether with home arrest. The defendant, Your Honor, has a, a continuing uh, situation where he uh, entices young girls on the Internet. So we're asking for $250,000 cash bond, no surety. Um, and no, and GPS tether if he's ever be able to post bond. Thank you. Okay. Uh, one question, Councilor Ragnan. Yes. Does he have any pending cases? Uh, not that I know of, Your Honor. The 1023 case, 1021 2023 case, has been dismissed without prejudice at the exam, and I couldn't find out it was because the witness was, if the witness was out of town or what the problem was. But okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Council Kirkland, go ahead, Esteban, please. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd ask this court, understanding the, the seriousness of these charges for um, a 10% bond, if this court is not inclined to do a high personal bond, as to what occurred there. But Mr. Pollard has maintained that he did not sexually assault um, the little girl. We, the, I'm not sure why this case wasn't charged until 2024, but it is a four-year-old case. My understanding is that he... Um, I don't, I don't believe he's had any convictions since then. He is a lifelong resident, has a child, so he has strong ties to the community. He also owns, owns a lawn service here. At this point, there's no amount of bond that he can't afford to pay, so even a 10% bond um, would be unaffordable for him. But given the age of this case um, and, and his lack of, of issues since this, um, I'd ask this court consider a high personal bond, if not that, a 10% bond. 
Thank you. I've heard the representations from both sides in this particular matter in reference to the beneficiary who is listed by the court or by DDC as Kevin Pollard is that in this particular matter, even though this is from 2020, okay, there was a forensic interview. This court is not considering the other cases that were dismissed. They were dismissed without prejudice, okay. This court is only going with this matter. In reference to this gentleman, the defendant, bond is going to be $250,000 cash. There's going to be a GPS tether, home arrest. Further, okay, it's going to be unaffordable. So today uh, is Friday. He's going to get another court date. Uh, today is the 26th, uh, January 29, 2024, 9 o'clock in front of Judge McConnell, who's going to be looking at the bond amount and bond conditions. Also, there is one other thing. This court uh, looks at clear and convincing evidence uh, standard, okay, based on the representation, based on the reading. This court is convinced that Mr. Pollard, okay, I'm sorry, the beneficiary, okay, that he is a creditor in this particular matter. That's why we're putting at $250,000 cash, GPS tether, house arrest. He does have the, again, the unaffordable bond redetermination for this Monday, January 29, 2024, 9 o'clock in front of Judge McConnell. Also, there is another bond condition. He's not to be around any minor children. That concludes the arraignment of the beneficiary, also known as Kevin Powler. Madam Clerk. Free trial, Your Honor. Do you want to no, I was talk to, to the gentleman Judge that's in front of the screen? Judge. Okay. Uh, just now, for the record, is that the clerk has declined to talk to the gentleman in front of the screen. No, that is not fair. Thank you. That is not fair. You cannot do this. Under oath and on record, you cannot do this. I have rights, and you violated them, and you was not my judge. Okay, you can go. Go ahead and do whatever. You cannot do that. Again. Those of you who haven't seen it, it's still fun. Okay. As the beneficiary, as the beneficiary, I asked the clerk. I'm sorry? Can we have those dates again? We couldn't hear them. What were the dates? February 2nd, February 8th. February 2nd, February 8th. The clerk has the administrator of this SUV QV trust account that she art that. Huh? What'd you say? Thank you, Your Honor. We're all set. Boy, I'm just getting railroaded here. Hello. Hi. 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 Oh my gosh, she's fine. Oh my gosh, she's gorgeous. Sir, what's your, what's your full name? name? Hi. How are you? I'm good, I'm sir. How are you? It's Mr. Anthony Renee Pipes. That's my full hey, real hey, legal hey, name hey. on my North Carolina valid driver's license that all I still right. have. All right. Pictures well, on well, my phone. All right, well, hold, All right, on, well, hold second, on a second, sir. Let me let me, let me, go, let me through go through this proceeding, proceeding okay? okay? So you're, so you're here, here because you were charged with theft of services and disorderly, services and disorderly conduct. conduct. I'm going to enter a not guilty plea, plea for you. You do, you do have the right to remain silent and the right to an attorney, but not necessarily at court expense. On this case, sir, I'm going to release you on your own signature. I'm going to order that you do not go back to the incident location. So that was a Denny's. Don't go back there. And then I'm going to give you a court date of February 20th at 8.30 in the morning. And that's at the Salarita Municipal Court. Sir, if you miss that court date, they can issue a warrant for your arrest. Do you have any questions? Uh, no, my, my mom was born on February 20th, 1943, so... Well, it'll be, well, it'll be easy, easy to remember your court date. Yeah, then. yeah, 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 yeah. All right. I all may right. be in Washington D.C. at the Waldorf Astoria. I have to pay a million dollars for four months. Four months of staying there, at the two thousand uh, square foot Franklin Suite. Wow! Wow! Okay. okay. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get the six thousand. Uh, six thousand square foot suite. So well, that's what well, I'm working on. Just make, just sure, make sure you don't miss out, out on that miss your court date because you don't want to get arrested. Okay. I won't. I won't. I won't. All right. All right. Good luck, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, you're cute. You're cute. Exciting and new. That's right. While we wait for DDC, hypothetically, we we couldn't like contact Wayne County Circuit or Frank Murphy to get an earlier date, could we? Hypothetically, you can do anything you want, but reality is another thing. Right. 
Well, can we hypothetically in reality meet somewhere halfway and, and maybe we can get him a February date? In whose world? Our, our, our world that we all coexist and live and, and, and love. Uh, you know what? Mr. Rod, Mr. Yes, Rod, Rod, that's your homework assignment. Make it happen. I will. I, I, I will. I would suggest Mr. Mirage contact the clerk in that courtroom. Yes. Maybe change that's, that's the exactly, date. That's exactly that's, what we're going to do. That's Boy. fantasy island. He got renamed it, man. No, no bond determination. His court is not March. We got to do something about that. Uh, we said Judge Williams. Got Hold on. Mute, mute, gentlemen, mute yourself, please. Rashawn Connor. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Mr. Connor. Mr. Connor, the first thing I note in your, in my files is that it looks like you have a suspended sentence order from Department 4 Judge Hazlett Stevens, and that's in case 23 CR 12633. I'm going to open that up and remind you that it looks like you entered a plea of no contest on October the 9th, 2023 to the crimes of uh, petty larceny and, and uh, sorry, and trespassing. For the petty larceny, you were set. This, this is a bad fact scenario, but but boy, does this guy uncork a fantastic line in the middle. That's to 180 days in the Washoe County Jail, consecutive to other re, Reno Municipal Court uh, charges. And that was a, and a stay away order from Walmart stores and Nordstrom Rack. That sentence was suspended for one year on the condition that you obey all laws. You also had 10 days in the Washoe County Jail with credit for time served on the trespass. I'm telling you this to remind you that if you got in any additional trouble and you enter a plea of guilty or no contest, which it looks like you have, that you could be susceptible to revocation of that 180 day sentence. Is that something you're aware of, sir? It's been brought to my attention. I'm a, I've been made aware now. Um, may I continue to, to speak right now or no? Well, let me, let me uh, go through the charge and make sure we have a clear record and then I'll allow you to speak, sir. Uh, so it looks like you were charged on, um, looking for the date, uh, it looks like January the 16th, 2024, with the crime of battery, that you willfully and unlawfully used force upon absent, sorry, Aspen clone by spitting into his face, unprovoked without a justifiable reason. You did, it looks like you have entered a plea of guilty or no contest to that charge, and the matter was set over to today's date. Yeah, you entered a plea of no contest on the 16th. The, the, the matter was set over to date, today's date to allow the city attorney to make contact with the victim in this matter. Hold on a minute, Mr. Connor. I'd like to hear from the lawyers first, and then I will hear from you, sir. Ms. Uh, Ms. Schumann, yeah, it's uh, on you. Your Honor, we did uh, make an attempt to get a hold of the victim, left a couple of voicemails. We have not heard back from him. In this case, it, it it looks like the defendant went into the Reno public market, <clears throat> was sitting on a staircase uh, that was kind of reserved for staff. Um, the victim approached the defendant and asked him to move. The defendant then spit in his face. Um, so completely unprovoked. Um, the victim in this case was just doing his job. And it appears the defendant is just going on a crime spree. We've got a trespassing, a petty larceny from the Walmart, Nordstrom Rack. So at this point, we're asking the court impose it, that you impose imposition of the 180 day suspended jail sentence on 23 CR 12633, and that you give him um, 30 days in jail for this offense. Are you asking that that 30 days run concurrent to the revocation period? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. And Mr. McGinnis? Thank you, Your Honor. It's unfortunate Mr. Conn finds himself in this situation. I can tell you that the battery occurred approximately three months after he was placed on the suspended sentence. The battery is a spitting in the face of an employee at Junkies. I don't believe there were any injuries. I will note that Mr. Connor has attempted on his own to take care of some of the issues he has, including his schizoaffective disorder. He was on medications for a period of time, taking Abilify, 
Uh, he didn't like the way it made him feel, so he went off that medication. He's gone down to well care. He's been a patient at well care. He also has a case manager at Terrace Campus. It's unfortunate, I believe Mr. Connor kind of falls in between the cracks of how the Reno Municipal Court could help him. I don't think COD Court could help him. I don't think Fresh Start could just based on his criminal history and based on these violent offenses. I recognize the weaknesses that he has and the struggles that he has. I think the court needs to be mindful that some of the events that occurred recently were the result of his mother passing away and then he was shot in the head in Arizona. So he's got some trauma that he's been dealing with and he hasn't been dealing with it very well. I'll submit it based on that and hope Mr. Connor does well. Thank you. Mr. Connor, this is a time that I can hear from you. I'd like to hear what you have to say for yourself, sir. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Uh, the event on the staircase, uh, the gentleman, when they come down, he say, get out the stairs. I said, all right, I'm gonna move. I said, if you can just get out of my way, he stood in front of me, you know? Now, recently, I've been through a lot of stuff. I got, they just jumped me. I got my tooth knocked out with a mallet right here by the Reno Event Center like two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, um, where I have to go try to go to St. Mary's to uh, to, to do another x-ray, but I, I didn't make it. Uh, anyway, I said to move. I sneezed at him. I didn't, I didn't spit at him. I still was sitting down, I sneezed at him. The mist from the sneeze, because he wouldn't move out the way. So I didn't commit the crime like that to where I say like, like I maliciously intent to spit on a person. I never done that in my life. You know what I mean? I sneeze. I asked him to move. What it does, he stands in the way like, I'm not moving until you move. I'm going to make sure you get out of here. But reasonably, get, I have bags on the floor. I have my backpack and I, and I have two shopping bags from the mall. Reasonably, I need time to get my bags. The guy is standing like right in front of my bag. So if I was to prostrate to get my bags, it puts it puts either my it puts my person near near his genitalia range, you know, because he's that close to me. Like I'm like this whole table with, you know, and he's right here. So if I was to bend any way, it's like I'm putting my face or or my Nobody wants to be near genitalia range. It's, a, it's the only reasonable thing he said so far. My, or my behind towards him <laughs> at, at, at his belt, you know? And I don't want to, to, to be objectified in that manner. So I say, can you move? You know, I'm still sitting down when I say this. I chew I sneeze because he freaks out. Let me get my bags now because this is the next thing gonna happen. They're gonna try to restrict my bags and say I stole from them because because it's, it may look like I, that's, I mean, on my rap sheet, yeah, it says that, but it may look like I got something from there. So let me get my bags now and let me try to get out of here. I didn't realize there's no offense to him. I go to Junkie and and go, and I, I, I go, I make a deal with the girl there, sell a jacket, and then I go to dressing room and I, I change my outfit. The police come to dressing room. If I realized I did something that foul, I would have been on the run for it. I went to no contest because I didn't want to wait so long for court dates because my my son out here. Well, no, you switched outfits thinking that would be sufficient. It wasn't. It was stupid. But th that, that was your method of escape. He just recently went to trance. No big deal, right? But if I could get out of here to get my settlement in Vegas, I can help him because he's in the streets. Is 20 years old already, I'm 41. But he's prostituted in the streets as a female. And even he's on the, on the phone in the porn. And I don't like him to live that life. Anyway, this ain't the big reason I came to Reno anyway. It's because my mom died and I just came here because I did job before I was more successful over here. And then I find him because his grandpa stays out here. They from, uh, he used to work at the college, Richard Forsell. That's that's my son's grandpa. So anyway, when I seen these things just taking a, a, a transpire in my life, I could use some help too. Because uh you know, I grew up in the nineties, so I do things a particular way. That's true. Um, it ain't always right, but I have to try to yeah. mosey on and then appear I'm challenged a lot. 
but I would like some assistance, whether they're them trying to just max me out because they don't ever offer me nothing. And then if they did, I couldn't believe it because I, I got a lot of encounters like at Target, the police just ran up on me and snatched me out of the out of the ride along cart and sparked. Okay. Mr. Like, Connor, I don't want to hear about I don't want to hear about other matters. So you've you've given me a pretty good explanation of your situation. It does sound like you've had some trauma in your life. Uh, the death of your mother, the fact that you were recently beat up and lost a tooth, the fact that your son is uh, obviously on the streets. I know I would be concerned if I were a parent. What I'm going to do is this. Uh, first, I want to remind you that you are a customer and you could leave any time. Whenever a person is at work, they're responsible for the business. And so when a person who is at work, they can't leave. So if they get in a confrontation with you, they can't turn around and walk away. And it was that employee's responsibility to safeguard uh, the, the place of employment. So you should have listened and you should have maybe said, excuse me, you're in my way. I don't know. It sounds to me like you may have done that. But I also believe that when you spit on anybody for any reason, sneeze, direct spitting, you did enter a plea of uh, no contest to the spitting charge. And you know it as well as I do, if you've been on the streets at all, that spitting on someone is very dangerous. It's also repulsive. So what I'm gonna do is this, I'm gonna revoke 60 days of the underlying sentence. Uh, of, so it will leave a balance of 120 days. It's gonna be still hanging over your head. I'm gonna extend that for two years. I'm gonna run, I'm sentencing you to 60 days on the spitting charge and running that concurrent to the revoked 60 days that I'm giving you. You should be able to complete the 60 days in a relatively short period of time. You'll still have a tail of 120 days with the requirements that you stay out of, now you stay out of junkie as well, uh, that you have, that you obey all laws, you have no drugs or alcohol during dependency of this case, and you're gonna be on a string for 120 days uh, for the next two years to stay out of trouble. If you can't, I, I will I will pull the plug as you have indicated and you'll do the whole the balance of the 120 days. Do you understand, sir? I understand that. Uh, may, I, may, I, may I ask uh, for one augmentation? Um, rather than do a hundred, two years to get caught up for 120, why can't I just do like, like an eight months, nine months probation period? Real quick, a flash probation. Because you because you can't seem to stay out of trouble while you're on a suspended sentence. So I want to extend that for two years. I'm going to extend that, that for two quick. years. I'm hopeful flash that probation. you'll get some and you know get some mental health treatment and stop breaking the law. Because I think you're a really good person. You've got a lot of good things happening in your life, but you need to take care of your mental health issues because I frankly think they have a a lot to do with why you keep getting in trouble. So you need to go to well care or one of the places, renal behavioral health, and see if you can get assistance for your mental health issues. And I frankly think everything else, all your other problems stem from your mental health issues. So yeah. right now you're gonna do 60 days in the Washoe County Jail, and then you'll be released. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna urge you strongly to go to one of those mental health providers and get into treatment, okay? Yes, ma'am. Can I mental health here? Can, uh, can you put me uh, to, to talk to mental health here because uh i'm right sure now, that mental I'm health doing... will do an evaluation for you mr connor okay all right you're gonna have to yes miss schumann your honor can we add a condition to the suspended sentence that he stay away from the reno public market yes thank you so i i had said uh that he stay away from mm -hmm. uh from junkie in the reno public market but uh, so uh, the city attorney has asked that you stay away from the whole big business, uh, Reno Public Market, and you're probably not welcome there. So uh, I'm going to ask, I'm going to order that you stay away from the Reno Public Market. And I'm going to wish you good luck, Mr. Connor, because if you can address your mental health issues, I think you'll be on the road to recovery. It sounds to me like your son needs your assistance uh, really bad. And so you need to stop getting in trouble so you can go help your son. Okay. Thank you. All right. Your, your excuse, sir. Uh, oh man, I gotta get together. Okay. Are you anticipating then filing an objection yourself? If if I object then they uh if I do that then I cut out a little bit. Okay, well I can't give you legal advice. I'm asking what we're doing here today. I so what I like what I'd like you to do is maybe look at this and then I have letters it's it's his declaration 
Who is Declan? My brothers to get his appointed as the fiduciary. The, uh, okay, if you so the way that you get me to review things is by filing them with the court and filing a motion with the court. So are you anticipating bringing documents into court for review? Yes. Okay. What are you anticipating filing? Well, he committed perjury in this to the, to the max. There shall not be any cutting of trees. <laughs> Don't cut any trees. I'll pass the order. To them. No cutting of trees, no felling of trees in partner number 12. We believe that we're going to be successful, and I, I can tell you why. I'm sure that, you know, if the court wants to hear our argument of why. I do not. Think we'll be That's why it's before the Court of Appeals. I don't need to yeah, Exactly. Hear it. Exactly. Why? But Mary Moore versus Christina Billups. <laughs> now. Good morning, Your Honor. Your PL sucks and it bores me. <laughs> Your name? Switch sides. Okay. Jeff Moore. You are who? I'm Jeff Moore, the son of Mary Moore. I'm here representing her, Your Honor. You can't do that. I have a, I have a document, notarized document. Doesn't matter. I've done it before, Your Honor. Not before me. Not before you, but other courts. You're not, me. and they've done it wrong. You can't do that. You're I'm not, the property you're, manager of the property. Are you a I'm judge? You want to argue with me about it? Because I'm going to tell you, you can't do it. Okay. Unless you're a lawyer. You need to get a lawyer. I, you can't do that. If I'm the property manager of the properties, I'm authorized agent to speak on behalf of the property. She is an individual. What you would be doing then is practicing law without a license. Okay. Which is a four-year felony. So you want to go ahead or not? Okay. Because I'll bring the prosecutor right up here. We can start the charges now. That's fine, Your Honor. No, I didn't rest in that, but that's fine. Yeah, that's what we thought. <laughs> How long will it take you to get Miss um, Moore to get an attorney? Um, give her a couple of weeks. She's in Florida right now. Who is it? I mean, we're at the point. It's almost settled anyway, but that's fine. Your name, ma'am? I got one or three weeks out. What would you like? Give me three. And it will be adjourned. February 16th, 2023. 24. What time? 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that'd be a no. This is kind of fun. This is this is almost heartwarming. It doesn't belong on my channel, but I'll let it slide this once. I got no sound. OM City of Southfield versus Daniel McGrady with Daniel Denise McGrady Whitney. Why does it say is that just the way you spell it? No, that, that's what my mother wanted to put. You know what? It, it, it looks like Daniel. It does, but Daniel. <laughs> then so it's like Dan, D A N, yeah. and then the N I L L E is like yeah. Yeah, and it's supposed to be like a hyphen over the I. I told her she it. got too fancy. <laughs> she got a little fancy on you, but that's a yeah, nice thing. Listen, that was my mom. Don't <laughs> oh, okay. oh, that's so nice. Thank she you. has lion's fingernails. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Yes, you right. yesterday. All right. Well, you're here today, and today's the date schedule. This is a resisting and obstructing a police charge. And let's see, it says here we're here for a hearing. And is this a delayed sentence? Oh, failure to comply with a delayed sentence. So they escalated the delayed sentence. All right. Yes, ma'am. Upon an allegation that she did not scream as directed and that she did not get her alcohol assessment. No, ma'am. So, Mr. Rivers, were you aware of that? Uh, I did read the, report, the probation report, Your Honor, yeah. Okay. Well, let's see. Defendant failed to report 12 4 for Zoom and has not made progress towards her. Well, you know what? Yeah. I was like the lion's nails. Well, okay. But he was supposed to be making some progress here. Can I tell you something, Ms. Johnson? Yeah, I know you, you yes. see a lot of people, but I told you in December that um, I don't have transportation or a job. I'm still looking for a job. I don't mind reporting for a drug test, but I can't do I don't have the money. I don't have transportation. I, I don't mind doing so. And what happened to the alcohol assessment? That cost $20. They said per defendant. That's not my problem. What is your problem? Okay. So the conditions were for six months review, maintain or obtain employment, alcohol mm -hmm. assessment, treatment if necessary. Mm -hmm. So we don't even know if you have a problem. No, I know. We didn't well, and we can't take your word for it. I'm sorry. We have to have the assessment. Um it also says don't go back over to the Dress on the day of court, do community That's across the street. Do community service if necessary. I did community service to pay on fines and costs. And then do a three days mandatory community service. And no alcohol or drugs, which we don't know. So that was what happened here on this. I, I was paid my 716 okay. and I did my own community service. So the only thing I'm missing is the drug assessment and the drug uh, test. Yeah. And something else. The drug test, the drug assessments. That's it. And you missed one probation appointment. I didn't know I had one. Since you missed on December 4th. What? Oh. <laughs> well, you know, you're listen, not. I'm not listen, Miss, 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 you need to be talking. See that, that guy right there? He's no, the, I don't he's the prosecutor. He's the one made the agreement with you. He's the one you better be trying to schmooze if that's what you're trying to do by. Grinning at me, but talk to him. Because <laughs> it's not his hands. I'm lightweight. I'm not a criminal. Well, I'm yes, you are. Come on. No, well, you got a conviction here. <laughs> you do have a record. I understand what you're saying, but it does make you have a criminal record. <laughs> Which is what we were trying to avoid by if you finished everything, you wouldn't have one. That was his agreement with. And, and and he's the one that I... I mean, if you're going to define criminals as people who commit crimes, you're a criminal. Listen to because it's his offer. <laughs> Sometimes he goes says no. Sometimes, depending on circumstances, he says okay. And he gives people more time to comply. Or he might just say okay. So what do you say now, sir? All right, I I have my question would be I, I have a our previous date of nine twenty nine. So is this a, a delay sentence already? There was an adjournment because uh, it's more difficult. Okay, so I I guess what I would say at this point, then Your Honor, is I I would go with the recommendation and just ask that you enter the conviction. In terms of further probation or anything like that, I would just ask maybe we just close the file at this. Mm -hmm. And just and just be done with it with no further probation or anything like that. Okay. And uh, did you see, were you trying to convince him otherwise? Be you didn't get a chance to say anything. So no, I, I, I kind of figured she'd already been given a, a chance. I had told the court I was representing Miss Wynn out of the divorce case. I you know, it was basically more or less handled, you know, in a pro bono capacity. And I knew she had financial issues, that's why she wasn't doing the, the finance paying for stuff to get the test done, which you know, yeah, they're still expected to do it, but you know, once she recently got some, some of the money out of the divorce, so that's why she went over and paid the court costs. Um, so at least she did that part, but you know, I think it's probably her best that it just falls so she can move on and in a couple years.
she lives in the city of Detroit in her mom's house, and that's an inheritance, and she can go through project completely and get a bunch of it. And I don't, I don't think she will have no prior criminal. Well, tell you what, since we didn't successfully get through. Listen, I look real cute for you today. Last time, well, I can't deny. Last time I came to you, you said, "Don't butter me up." You're trying now, but you do look nice today. I will say that. <laughs> and we're not going to give you jail time or do anything like that. You, you so did the best you could. You did pay off your fines and costs through, I guess, your community service, so that's good. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just going to go ahead and sentence you to your fines and costs as uh, we previously ordered. And we're already paid. And um, that'll close out the case in the, with the convention. And as your lawyer said, um, you know, can certainly in a few years, come back and try to get that set aside. No, 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 I'm coming back. I want to see you no more. Set aside. If you want to get it set aside, you got to come back. You won't see me. I'll be gone by then, okay? <laughs> Just so you know. You'll be dealing with a whole new judge probably no, by no, then. No, 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 no. I like you. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, Mr. Johnson. Thank All you. All right. Good luck to you, though, know, Ms. Summer Yeah, okay. I'm working on it. Thank you very much, Judge. Thank you. Holy wow. That's messed up. Arbor One West versus Brandy Morris. Okay, sure, walk up on the one to me too. Too. It's pretty good. It's Brenner, we good. do not have an agreement on this one. Um, this is the one the defendant was is on section eight. Yes. And She's indicated to me that she's it's going to begin again in February. I asked for some verification of that. I did not I didn't see any verification. Yep. My client doesn't have any verification of that. So um, at this point, she also says she applied to SER, correct? Um, and but I didn't have proof of that either. So So you did an SER? Okay. How you doing? This is the, the issue. Last week when her and I discussed it, the complex was saying, first of all, I was working. I do have Section 8. I pay a portion of my rent. I have welfare to work. So we, the manufacturing, I lost my job. They did a, just a surprise layoff on the fourth. So at that point, I let the office know I'm this will be my last check. I gave them $700, which is my whole check. I told them that I will have to, to put it this in through my Section 8, let them know what was going on. At that point, they said that I owe $400 for security when I first moved in. I've been there almost a year. I felt like I didn't agree with that. Their paperwork was inaccurate. We met last week on Zoom, and then she was saying that she agreed with me that they didn't know exactly what the numbers were. Now, I guess they have that worked out. So now they're saying that I owe, I believe, 1700 I told her that I just recently got my job at Google. I start the 29th, so I won't get paid until the 9th. I explained to this, to, I don't know. It's Laka. Yes. What is her name, sir? Laka. OK, to the lawyer that I <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's OK. <laughs> I <laughs> usually I spot it a little bit, but <laughs> I could go into payment arrangements for the 17th, excuse me. I can make an arrangement on the 6th, on the 9th, and the 16th, have it paid off. Then she was explaining February rent. I was explaining to her that due that I do have section A, and I do have my SCR and all my paperwork in here. She was just really not trying to hear it, and I didn't want to be wild the situation, so I just asked to speak directly to you. So I was trying to explain to her that I've already put in my paperwork with Section 8 saying that I am not working. They have to verify everything, which takes a minute. But the rent will be paid for February. So that just leaves me with what I got going on now. 
And she said, that's not good enough for her. Then I explained to her, I did put in an SER, and she said, I didn't have proof. I have proof on my phone right here and a tracking number. She said, I was supposed to put it in on a certain day. The reason why I didn't go in on that day because they didn't even know how much I owed on our last hearing. So once they were still trying to figure out everything, I just went ahead. Uh, SOS told me to just put in an SER just to protect myself. I'm not really trying to get resources because I can try to do this on my own. I was just trying to put a hold on until I got my paychecks going back. And she didn't seem to understand that. So that's why we couldn't come up to a conclusion or agreement. And she wanted me to say that this is where the problem came in. She wanted me to agree to pay the whole amount. And I told her I was not comfortable agreeing because I have a contract with Section 8. So Section 8 has to pay my own portion until I get back able to do it myself, which would be next month. And she, she wasn't understanding that. And that's what left us to where we are. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm assuming that. Is the claim 1731? Yes. 77? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And I would ask for entry of a judgment at this juncture, Your Honor. I don't believe the paper was submitted to the court like Judge Barr indicated it had to be. Um, that's plaintiff's position and request. Yeah, that's the way I saw it. I was talking to German because I submitted it and you submitted I, what? I submitted the SCR and I did you did you bring it over to the court? No, because at the time they told we went to court. I think they said that it had to be the one that we didn't even know they they were still trying to figure out what was the amount that was owed. Because last time we were here, you and I both agreed that. Okay, but how much was supposed to be submitted? Well, not submitted. How much? Let me go back to the SCR. What date did you do your SCR? I did my SCR Wednesday night, which means it went through Thursday morning. Wednesday night being the 10th? Last week. It should have been the 10th. I'm sorry. The 10th of January? Uh, yeah, we had court. I just have a tracking number. But you had court on the what? The court. It was last week, Your Honor. It was on the 12th. So you had your SER in before that no, day? I had it the day after court. Court so, was on a Friday, Your Honor. Well, Monday, I'm sorry. The next following day. I did it after. So you did it on MLK Day? I believe so, on the internet. I have a track. Okay, record. gotcha. So, I'm going to ask you this. And, and Ms. Luckoff, maybe you can clarify this because this has been coming up for me. At the first hearing, when they're told they need to do that, are they telling them that they need to also have the form? Yes, they're telling them they need to submit the form within five days to the court. Uh, so to me, they didn't even have a, they were still trying to figure out my security deposit. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. I'm talking about your form that grants a stay. I don't know anything about that, and I tried to explain my time to that. They told me to put in an SCR, and that's what I did. Who Judge Barr does. Who told you this? SLA. Because we didn't even think that we were going to have to go this far. Yeah, I know. SOS told you that. I'm trying to figure out why the forms aren't being filed with the court. I, all right. Do you have anything that verifies your February rent is set, ma'am? For from Section 8? Yes. I just have the paperwork, the change of packet I put into Section 8. And I have um, an email from my worker saying that she's working on everything. I didn't know that I had to have something saying. No. I, to verify everything. Mm -hmm. Waiting on Section 8. But I've done everything on my part. And did you, your SER, there's been no determination on that? Not that I know of, sir, no. So, what's, how are you, what's your intent, or how would you get the 1731 paid? My intent was to make a payment on the 9th and the other payment on the 16th. All right. You understand the plaintiff's reluctance to do that because 
They don't have anything saying Section 8 is going to pay your rent for February. Sir, they're in a contract with Section 8 that states that I'm not working Section 8. Just I, I get all. that, but they need something from Section 8 saying we're going to pay. That's in my housing contract. When I first moved there, they state that if you don't, if something happens, Section 8 covers your portion, and they should know that. You know, you're wrong. Oh, I apologize. All right. I mean, you're not wrong in terms of the language. You're not hearing what I, or listening to what I'm saying. If you were the landlord, and I've got somebody that's behind 1731, right? And there's been something with your Section 8, fine. They're asking for some verification that Section 8 is going to cover that February period, your February rent. Okay? They don't have that. Follow me? I do, but I the part I don't understand is it's kind of like they already have a contract with Section 8. Like, I explained, I, I can't say, I can only cover. I know they have a contract. Okay. But well, the contract is, but listen, the contract is dependent upon what you do. So my voucher is in. Why? No, because, it, listen to me. Let's say you, you're saying you reported all this stuff to Section 8, but let's say you didn't, right? The landlord's not going to know that. Nothing changes for the landlord on their end in terms of what they're looking at. But let's say then you, you did submit it to Section 8, but they dropped the ball and they don't do their part. Again, the landlord doesn't know. You see what I'm saying? All right. So the issue here becomes how how are you and if you can't get the 1731 paid before February 9th, you got a problem. I tried to go to a panel for the 1700, which I told her I, I could have it all paid all by the 16th. Oh, it gets worse. Of February. It's about to. Which means I'll just pay on the 9th and the 16th. That'll count with the 1700. But she wanted me to commit to the other 1400 of February. That's what our problem came in. Right. Because they don't, if you listen to me, because they don't know if Section 8's going to pay it. That's why she wants you to commit to pay it. If particularly she wants you to commit to pay it if Section 8 doesn't. I have no problem with that. It's just the way she said it. You see, the landlord wants to get paid for their property that you're living in. I don't know what's difficult about this. I felt like I was being back there. She was, how she explained it to me, Your Honor. It was like she was saying I didn't even have Section 8. I was lying, and I was showing her email. All right, I've listened to enough here. Hey, <laughs> ma'am, ma'am, stop, stop, because that's not true. I, no, that's not true. Ms. Luckoff has been before this court time and time again. And I'm going to tell you something. She doesn't lie to people. She just tells them the truth. It may not be what they want to hear, but she doesn't lie to people. And the white, no, listen. Because if she called you a liar, I'd be saying the same thing to her. You don't come in here saying somebody's lying to you at all. Because if you tell me somebody's lying, you better bring it and you better be able to prove it. Okay, sir, she was saying that I was telling her other than the truth, but I was showing her the emails where we were going back and forth about that. That is absolutely so I'm untrue. I'm not going to, I, I, I said that there's no proof. I'm about done with you. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. I'm about done with you. Because I'm going to tell you what, when I'm sitting here and explaining it to you, you weren't listening to me. So I know exactly what was going on as Ms. Luckoff's talking to you. You're not listening to a darn thing she's telling you. And you're just making up whatever you want to make up to try to figure it out. And then I'm going to sit up here and try to call her a liar. They don't, that doesn't work here. No, no, there's no apology necessary, and I don't accept it. Because even after I told you she didn't lie to you, you said it again. I don't know how else to prove that what I'm saying besides trying to... The money's owed. Um, I'm going to find no tribal issue. I'm getting judgment to the plaintiff for possession. Judgment amount, $1,731.77. Writ issued 10 days.
of being here and act respectful to people, then I don't have a problem with you. But you don't do it, I'm done. Bye. Okay. Have a good evening. So just can I appeal this or what can you I can appeal it. Paperwork's done in the hallway. Good Court calls the case in Arbor One West versus Mercedes Houston. Heck, it's a double rainbow. Hey, Cal, look at that. It's a double rainbow. Well, there you have it. We end with a double rainbow. That one, that one, I really like that. You know, there, there are different ones. There are a lot, a lot of clips tonight, but that last one I really liked. But I, I, I was worried about it because it's, it's a slow developer. But the, you, you got to see it all. You got to see it all, or the, or the end doesn't make sense. All the foundations required. But uh, she, she just, she just went a little too far with Judge Simpson, and uh, I don't blame him. And then, and then she thinks she's gonna she's gonna bully Judge Simpson with an appeal. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's right down the hall. Right down the hall. Good luck with that. We got a record. They can go to Law Talk with Mike if they need to. <laughs> you made a fool of yourself. Uh, it, that's pretty clear, and you owe the rent. So what I did is entered a judgment. Good luck overturning that. All right. All right. That's what I have. That's what I have. Thank you, everybody, for contributing. Thank you all for coming out. I really appreciate it. Everybody, be safe. Behave yourselves. <laughs> Don't get into the genital, genital region. You, you know? Unless you unless you want to. <laughs> <laughs> no non-intentional genital region excursions. Okay. I, I think that's that's the I think that's the rule for, for the chat here. <laughs> talk with Mike. <laughs> Have a good night. Don't get arrested. I'm not bailing you out. I'll see you soon.